oil prices surged again Monday, adding to a global energy crunch. U.S. benchmark crude jumped as much as 2.5% in early European trade, going above $81 a barrel. That is on top of almost 5% gains last week. Prices have risen as economies emerge from lockdown and demand rises. U.S. crude is now up for seven straight weeks. The same factors have driven coal and gas prices higher, making oil more attractive for power generation, adding another push to prices. It all adds up to a mounting energy crisis. In China, the government has ordered miners to ramp up coal production amid energy shortages. In India, some states are experiencing blackouts because of a lack of coal. And countries across the Northern Hemisphere are wondering if they'll have enough energy as winter looms and heating demand rises. Oil production is now rising in response. U.S. drillers last week added five new wells, marking the fifth straight weekly increase in operating oil and gas rigs. The OPEC group of producer nations is also maintaining a steady increase in output. Even so, data shows U.S. investors are ramping up their bets on higher oil prices to come. Residents of Sydney, Australia filed into their favourite bars on Monday, as much of the city prepared to reopen after nearly four months of lockdown. Hey, cheers, boys. Sydney's reopening comes as Australia seeks to shift its strategy by gradually lifting restrictions across the country upon reaching vaccination targets. Prime Minister Scott Morrison celebrated the news at a press conference on Monday. Today is a day so many have been looking forward to. A day when the things we take for granted will celebrate. Being with family and friends, getting a haircut, uh, grabbing a meal together, going to the pub and having a beer with your mates. These are things that uh, across New South Wales and particularly in Sydney, people will be able to do again today. Under the relaxed rules for New South Wales, Australia's most populous state, retail stores, gyms and restaurants have reopened with reduced capacity, while vaccinated people can gather in bigger groups and attend weddings and funerals. The state aims to hit an 80% vaccination rate later this month, which will be the trigger to relax distancing limits. But the unvaccinated must remain at home until December 1st. Australia's international borders have been largely shut for a year and a half with vaccination finally gaining momentum after a slow start. The country plans to allow fully vaccinated residents to enter and leave freely starting next month. 